My goodness. Bill, I think you went overboard, but um, I really appreciate your comments. Um, you know, anyone who knows Bill Nielsen knows that he is a living embodiment of Maya Angelou's famous quote. They'll forget what you said, people will forget what you do, but they'll never forget how, they made, how you made them feel. And um, Bill, you have touched so many people in our profession and made so many people feel special. Um, and it's funny that Bill brought up our, the time we first met in 2006 because um, I will never forget, Bill, how you made me feel um, like a worthy colleague at that first meeting um, that I had. I was a newly minted chief communications officer. Um, I had not been in my role very long, and I was invited to Dr. Jim O'Rourke's uh, symposium of very well-regarded chief communications officers at the University of Notre Dame. And I mean, can you imagine how nervous I was? It was just incredible. Um, but I want to say that I remember two things about that particular meeting, and both of them are feelings. Um, one was the feeling of drops of sweat running down my back as I gave that presentation <laughs> that you uh, just talked about. Um, and the other was an incredible feeling of relief and gratitude when you were the first to shake my hand and recognize me for um, being there and to welcome me as part of the group. So, Bill, you're very special to me. Thank you. <laughs> Receiving this honor is the highlight of my career, and it is humbling in the extreme. And in my opinion, there are many others who deserve this distinction far more than I do. But I hear the voice of my gracious departed mother in my head, who would say to me, Wendy, just say thank you. <laughs> so I shall, with a heart bursting with gratitude and appreciation. First, um, Tina to Tina, my colleagues and friends on the board of the Institute for Public Relations, thank you for this recognition. It's an honor and a privilege to serve with you. To all of you here tonight, thank you for supporting the Institute. As the premier organization in our profession focused on research uh, in, on, and for public relations, IPR plays an incredibly important role. And I believe there's still too many people out there, too many professionals who are unaware of the treasure trove of resources that are available to them through the Institute. Um, so thank you for helping us. Thank you for being here, and thank you for helping us spread the word. To all of my colleagues, mentors, and heroes, um, and you all know who you are, um, including the former Medal of uh, Hamilton Medal honorees here with tonight, tonight, I want to thank you for inspiring me, for encouraging me, for teaching me. Um, you absolutely have shaped me and made me better. Credit also goes to the incredibly talented people that I've had the great pleasure of working with over the years. Thank you. As always, you have my greatest admiration and respect. And finally, I want to recognize my best friends who came from Canada to be here with me tonight, um, my family and um, my young men, Ian, Colin, and Duncan. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, I love you. So I have just a few things that um, I want to share, and um, I'll try to be as quick as I can, but I, I learned some important things at USAA, and I wanted to take the opportunity to share some of those with you tonight. Uh, I was incredibly blessed to have um, an incredible career, um, working for great organizations, but as Bill alluded to, I think my most meaningful time was 16 years that I spent at USAA, the financial services company for the military community. Thanks to the enlightened CEOs that I worked with, I was and my team was able to have an impact on that great organization. And my proudest accomplishment is the work my team and I did to bring forward the human emotions at the heart of USAA. The attributes that make USAA special have inspired me, and they're relevant to every aspect of our lives. So I'd like to share a little bit tonight with you about purpose, empathy, advocacy, and leadership. First purpose, 
Purpose is when we contribute to a cause greater than ourselves. It's an essential driver of human motivation. And at its core, USIA's purpose is driven by patriotism and a desire to serve those who serve our country. At USAA, we leverage that purpose every day by illustrating and celebrating the difference that we make in the lives of military families. And ultimately, that became part of our collective consciousness, something we could all connect directly to the, our contributions. USAA's world-class customer service is the direct result of the passion that employees feel about their purpose. So you may be wondering, how hard could it possibly be to create meaningful purpose when you serve the military community. Um, and USAA certainly does have a noble mission. But what I've learned is that anyone can fully realize the power of purpose when they connect what they do and what their organizations do to an improvement in human lives, however small. Second, empathy. Uh, as part of our brand work, we undertook a psychological analysis of why members are so passionate about USAA. And it turns out that what mattered most to them was their feelings of belonging and connectedness. They believed that USAA understood, it, understood them, wanted to protect them, and cared for them. And we did, of course. But it was fascinating to learn that those feelings were at the heart of our members' incredible loyalty. So it may seem obvious in hindsight, but I assure you, we had our work cut out for us convincing business leaders that USAA's meaningful differentiation in the marketplace was not the great features of our financial products, uh, but in fact, the fact that we genuinely understood and deeply cared about the well-being of our members. Empathy forges powerful connections between people in business and in every other aspect of our lives. Third, advocacy, putting other people's interests first, making other people's problems our problems. Advocating for others is a highly effective tool to create strong, long-lasting relationships, not to mention the power that it has to change the world. Successful alliances require reciprocity, giving as well as receiving. Now, we know that in our personal lives, but it sometimes escapes us in business. By contributing time, talent, and treasure to causes important to our constituents, we demonstrate real commitment. Our brand work at USAA led us to focus on supporting the caregivers who take care of our wounded, uh, nation's wounded warriors, and advoca advocating for that cause and others um, has driven deep trust and loyalty. And for other companies, that's just one more good reason for businesses to commit to social responsibility. Finally, leadership. Surrounded by retired military flag officers at USAA, I came to understand that leadership is everything. And that each of us, before all else, must be leaders. Alexander Hamilton was an extraordinary thinker and writer. Um, but as a leader, I believe, he represented what we do at our best. He had vision, the courage of his convictions, and he contributed new ideas and policies to advance the cause of his nation and fellow man. I think we should all seek to do the same. Hamilton was alive during an, an inflection point in our country's history, and we're experiencing another right now. Just as in Hamilton's day, what's needed most at this pivotal moment is leadership. Leadership from business and leadership from each of us. Corporate America has been increasingly willing to address broad political issues and social change. In the past, that wasn't the case, but there's a new Harris poll that suggests that there's considerable support for it today. Thank goodness. You won't be surprised to know that research tells us that government is trusted the least of any of our major institutions. Business, on the other hand, ranks just below NGOs as the most trusted. So it seems to me that today, business is the only institution with the power, influence, and effectiveness to make positive change. In my view, it has the responsibility to do so by working constructively with government and civil society. 
After all, if not CEOs in business, then who? I, I, um, I want to say that I think that we all have a responsibility to help our businesses engage in making the world a better place. And I believe that our, it is our job as communicators, and there's a lot of communicators in the room, to help our organizations see the opportunities that we have to make change, to make sure that we convey the risks involved in that, but then to move forward in a way that is consistent with the purpose and the values of our organizations. I want to thank you all once again for this tremendous recognition. I've never been prouder to be a public relations leader, and I've never been humbler to receive this award. Thank you.